so we drove it out. It was horrible. I mean, they said, they're like, look this. There was, <laughs> there was no, it was like, it wasn't even attached to the road. We, have, we can never drive this thing. We'll, this will never work. So we went back to Layton's house. He, and this was off of a narrow road. We realized we were going to have to back this van into this steep slope and that we probably would kill ourselves. Therefore, we kept it. <laughs> <laughs> and we used it. I, a few times, I remember the very first ERA event up in Charlottesville, where we had like a dress rehearsal for our presentation and what have you. And I'm sure there are pictures of that somewhere, because uh, I remember how awful my hair looked up <laughs> the pictures. But anyway, but there was a like a feminist concert in Arlington that that evening, and Jean and I and Rhoda Hunnigan in the van, we were going to drive the van up to the concert, and so we're driving up 29, and suddenly the van stops. It just stopped. We wouldn't go any further, and I had managed to pull it through off the road, and we got up, you know, opened the hood, <laughs> <laughs> and we're looking under the hood, and this police car pulls up, and this, this policeman gets out, and he, he says, uh, can I help you ladies? And Rose said, no, we need no help from any man. She said, well, he drives off. We said, Rhoda, what are we supposed to do now, Rhoda? Get in, get in the van, Rhoda. <laughs> anyway, Jean had been following us in her car, actually. And she, we weren't too far from Barbersville. So she drove over to Barbersville to get her husband. John Clark and he came over and us because it was so I kept saying it felt like we were out of gas, but we couldn't be out of gas because we just filled the van up before we left Charlottesville. How could we find turns out this it had it was a truck, it had two tanks, but we didn't have that. <laughs> we knew nothing. And, and one tank was empty, the one we were driving but the one we had filled up was full. <laughs> and there was like a lever underneath the, the bench carpeting in the back seat. Like, you're supposed to shift the lever but but this took at least six hours to figure out. <laughs> we missed the concert and everything oh. else. But so we we got rid of that van. I can't remember. When did we get the? the I thought late. Like I think it was. I think I'm going to say '77 because on the bottom of this this um, plaque or this chart I have, it says 70, 1977 to 1987. It's the ten year period of so. But, but yeah. I, I think you're right. I think Leighton. I think Leighton bought it. I thought we said, Leighton, we can't, we can't make this truck work for us. And, and he yeah. bought us. And there was some paying him back over time or something like that. But then we had a real van. But there was, it was like, okay, here's where you were, and there was the road. I mean, there was right. something mm -hmm. between right. you the and the engine was behind you. Right. And it was, open it was a, a standard transmission. I had no idea how to drive a standard transmission. Carol Pollan and Sweeney and I went down to um, Virginia Beach to do a caravan stop. And when we're driving back, it's like 3 o'clock in the morning. We get to as far as Williamsburg, and she says, oh, I have a migraine, Marianne. I have to get, I, and then she pulls off the rug, gets in the back, collapses. <laughs> I said, well, what are we supposed to do? And she said, well, you have to drive. I said, I cannot drive a stick. And she said, well, I do that or we spend the night here. So I learned how to drive us that bumped our way down. <laughs> um, but we had so many wonderful experiences. Yeah, the, the van went all over the state giving speeches and having events to support a year Oh, right. We had the we said organizing tool. I'm sorry, we probably should have made that more clear. This was yeah. the, 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 the And it became the visual symbol. It's a visual symbol. Um, it threw a rod going down 95 on our way to Daylax, passing in my shop. Goes the van, and, and, and I you know, passed through the very all over the road. And I just, I just had cars. Do we have any brakes still? <laughs> she said, I don't know, Marianne. Why don't you try it? <laughs> so we pull off the road, and, and we shot the shot the motor on the van. So and she said, well, what are we going to do? I said, we're going to hitchhike into Fredericksburg. So I got there, this truck, trucker stops. We get in the cab of the truck. Oh. And went, oh, so never do that today. And I, I really remember, I had to sit in the middle. It was really hot. And when we get to Fredericksburg, we had this important meeting in Galax. And so 
we we had to get to Galax. And if so you don't know where Galax is, it's in the far western part of the state. All, all the way, way down south. All the way down there. And it would have been so hard to get people to, to, to find people down there who were willing to organize. Of course, we did the van stop to the area stops in key districts. We were doing political targeting as part of this. So I said, well, we have to run a plane. We <laughs> Our girls have to run a plane. And Pat said, well, OK. What do you think she'll think? I said, we won't tell her until after we sign the contract. <laughs> so I go, go, and we sign the contract. And then I call Jean up. And I said, Jean, the band blew a rod. And it, we've had it hauled to a, a repair shop. And, and we, but we have to get the A-like, so we have rented a plane. <laughs> and she said, well, you have what? <laughs> Jenny now has no budget for this. I said, well, we'll find the money. And the, the pilot, T. Murphy, the pilot's calling. We have to go. I said, we get in the plane. We take off. And and Pat's in the back seat. And he tells me I could fly. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm not going to have to. I get into a stick ship. I do the plane. It's so fun. Planes went up down and Pat started throwing up, so she had to, get up. <laughs> <laughs> had to surrender the control. But there's these huge, we're doing this tiny little plane, huge cloud banks. I mean, just the, and so our, our pilot said, Well, can we get through this way? No, we look back at this way. No, we can't, we can't do that. So he says, We can't get through the Galax, so we have to land in Charlottesville. I, I said, Well, let's land in Charlottesville because that's where Gene is, so we will know somebody there. So, so, so we landed and and we called somebody that Pat knew. I don't know how we got this kind of thing. I you know there was a little a telephone in the airport. It was a tiny little airport. We called her up and she said, well, she didn't know where Jean was, but she could recognize Jean's car. So we drove around town until we found Jean's car. <laughs> and, then, and Jean was at a meeting. And this so Jean Crawford to Crawford. Yes. And which color was her car that week? It was just white. This was one she owned with John Clark. So we get so we get in Jean's car and we go out to her house in Barbersville, which is the, is the one if you if read about it in the program, um, Jean's Love of Animals, Born Free, which is this one the house in the middle of the cow pasture. And we spent the night at Jean's house, but our pilot forgot to unfile the flight plan. So that the whole flight world thought our plane was lost. <laughs> so they launched a search through the mountains for the down crashed plane. <laughs> and, Pat, and Pat's husband, who was in Roanoke, I guess, is where Pat lived in Blacksburg. Blacksburg. Blacksburg, that's right. We in Blacksburg. Pat's husband thought we had crashed and were dead. And <laughs> all this stuff I was just like. Uh, but we were actually safe and sound in Barbersville until Pat went out to take Jean to work the next morning. And actually, that car was a bright green. I forgot about that. It was a, because I remember, I'm visualizing it now, because that's when the bull came up the steps, leading all these other cows. You know, I'm on the phone with National now, where there's a bull. And, and, and there, I said, you know, I have to go. It was talking to Alice Cohan. I said, Alba, I have to go because this bull is coming up the steps. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't talk to you now. <laughs> Ellie wants to know this. <laughs> I have a bull problem. <laughs> <laughs> so I started to start raising the little cans because the bull's going away. <laughs> and we drove the bulls out, out of the, the yard and everything. But, but That's bull abuse. <laughs> But Pat wouldn't come out of the house. She was afraid to come out of the house because the, cow, the cows were literally going to get her boots. So I raised his pie, pulled the car right next to so that we could open the door. It would be right against the, the fence for the house, and she could run. And we could run out of the house and get in the car because we were determined to get daylight. Get in the car. And then that bull came back and started humping the car. <laughs>
first trip, uh, your first uh, mm -hmm. public speaking, and you spent the night or the evening polishing nail, polishing your nails, and yeah. and primping and and getting all ready for this first public appearance that you were going to have. <coughs> and, and you went in the van, the one, the original one, I think. In that right. Case. And we, um, it, it, but what would happen is you'd have to grab hold of these metal poles because we were traveling jeans or something, but when we got ready for the appearance, we would close our dresses, so we'd have to grab these poles and hoist ourselves up. Jean said, not me, I'm not ever doing that. <laughs> so she uh, just got in the cab. She just got in the, in the cab, right. Um, but yeah, we, I mean, the van was wonderful. In Blacksburg, the van didn't have much power. Mm -hmm. it, had, it had political power <coughs> and social power. But it didn't have much horsepower. So we, I remember a van uh, uh, stop that we did in Blacksburg. And you do realize that we showed the movie How Women Got the Vote by Jean Stapleton. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was from the Sewell Belmont House. Yes. I have donated money to the Sewell Belmont House to have that film made into a DVD. Ooh, that's wonderful. So, wonderful. you know. Well, every time we showed it, it we would it would catch on fire. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more off the beginning. Yes, <laughs> but, well, <laughs> the, well, maybe that part would be on the DVD. Right, that's right. Um, but that, that night in Blacksburg, and people, we always stayed in people's houses. We never had money for hotels or anything like that. So we were told where we needed to go spend the night, and Blacksburg was very hilly, if not mountainous. And, and we came down this hill, and then the van wouldn't go up the other side. <laughs> <laughs> and it would roll back down, and they would try to get it to go out, it wouldn't make it. So finally I said, okay, he, this van is stronger in reverse than it is in <laughs> So we backed the van out of the back of the hill and said, all right, now let's go. Roll! <laughs> so we came down, went through that dip, up, up, made it up to the top of the hill. I said, but we're not going that way again. <laughs> but we took the van to Delaware. There was an uh, abortion uh, rights so issue that Delaware and it we had to pop pop the gear to get it going when we left it. <coughs> we started. It's the only time in my life I popped the gear. And, and and we had to stop to eat and we left it left it running in the parking lot because we didn't have a hill to pop the gear on. <laughs> oh my and then we took the van to Chicago after we lost in Virginia we took the van to Chicago for that last big march. And we got moved in Indiana and I wanted to chase down the moon. <laughs> Rush hour. <laughs> it's creating the biggest traffic jam you've ever seen. And I said, we, We're never going to ratify in Illinois, and you don't understand any support we have. We just lost. But we could get it started, and Gene tried to start it. And finally, they had to say, All right, Mary, because they wanted now to drive it in. By that time, I was the chair of the Virginia Women's Political Caucus, so they didn't want the caucus driving the van into Chicago. But when they could get it started, and, and all they had to do was hop off, hop off, they finally said, All right, Mary, you get to try. One of the, this is a terrible, cheesy transition, but did one of those vans go on the march to Richmond? Or was oh, it no. just? No, no, that was earlier. This was earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that was weird. But we, we didn't start the van until 77. Uh, uh, well, you we probably that. started the first van earlier. No, I think it was, no, I think it was, it was early 77. It was actually Junior recruited the van because uh, we were marching and Georgia and I, who was the third person that we used to walk with? Uh, Kay? Kay Brooks. Kay Brooks. No. And Kay. The, right, Kay. The mother. Ooh, the, Kay, the, the older one. The yes. One. From Vermont. And uh, we would walk. I would walk to Georgia's house, and then we would walk all the way down almost to Mount Vernon. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. And well, because we, we needed to strengthen ourselves for that long walk. And I am so grateful to you. Georgia for saying that we needed to do this because by golly I would not have made it if it hadn't been for our walking. Right. Well, we we did two different kinds of uh, trainings together. These were different. Uh, and one of them was I would drive to Marianne's house. It was about four and a half miles away. We would walk to my house, have a bathroom stop. And then we'd walk back to Mary Ann's house. <laughs> so we, we had about uh, ten nine, miles. Yeah, about nine or ten miles that we would be practicing with, and and we would talk the whole time. Um, and then 
on the weekends, Marianne and, uh, and Kay and I would start walking toward Richmond using the, the bike path and all the things in Alexandria. And we would go out five miles and come back five miles. And then the next day, next weekend, we'd go out seven and a half miles and come back. And then we worked up to 20 uh, ten miles. Miles. Yeah, we worked up to, to being able to do able to do 20 miles. The, the pro and one of the things that we needed to do with that march was to find a place to have our kickoff rally. Uh, because we would need to start at 7.30 in the morning. There was no way we were going to get press or people at 7.30 in the morning. So we kept looking for a place, and we found a park in Bellevue, and figured we'd be there about 9 o'clock, I think it was. And so that's where we, we actually started had at the kickoff rally. You know, what? Did, did, didn't it start at 801 Pitt Street? And then Walk. The walk. Oh, right. Yeah, probably. Yes. Because that's where he lived. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. That I, I missed that. I was paying too much attention to my feet. But <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I remember the blessing street. because I had gone. I had North gone hiking in a new pair of shoes, which mm -hmm. I was going to use for the march, and I wanted to break them in, and I ended up getting these terrible, deep, bloody blisters, mm -hmm. and I really began to be afraid that I wouldn't be able to walk the whole distance. Mm -hmm. And I remember you had you had asked one of the women priests to come. Allison Cheek. Oh, Allison Cheek. Cheek. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she blessed my feet. She blessed your feet. She and the blisters me. healed. It was the most amazing thing. I can say that I had one miracle in my life. Mm -hmm. And it did not ever hurt all the way down to Richmond. By the time we got to Richmond, I didn't even have scars. Mm -hmm. The important thing about that was that you know, women didn't really get press at that time. But there, there was one thing in Washington that makes the news, and that's cold weather. <laughs> so we had this cold snap, and it, we must have, I think we left on January 9th, and it was nine degrees that day. So that was news. But also, months before, I had asked Allison Cheek to come bless the march. Allison Cheek was one of the 11 women, the first group of women, ordained irregularly in the Episcopal Church, and that had been in Philadelphia. She was at St. Stephen in the Incarnation downtown, and my husband and I were attending there, so we knew Allison. And she was very excited about coming to Bless the March because she could see the connections. Well, nobody cared very much, except like seven to ten days before, Allison was on the cover of Time Magazine as Woman of the Year. <laughs> and uh, they actually decided this was the year of women, so they had a woman for every month, but it was Allison's picture on the front. And that's what brought the press out. They could have cared less about Alice Mio or anybody else, but, but Allison was there. And after she blessed the march, the final phrase being, and may your underwear be warm. <laughs> yes, I remember. <laughs> yeah, I think may the sun shine upon you, may the wind be at your back, and may your underwear be warm. I, I pulled her over and I said, Allison, you have to bless Marianne's feet. And she did. But I was really dumb about this because when I asked her to bless the march several weeks before, several months before, I took my shoes and socks and had her bless my shoes and socks. And she put them up on the altar at St. Stephen in the Incarnation, and she blessed my shoes and socks. But I didn't ask her to bless my feet. And so <laughs> I wound up with more blisters than I had. <laughs> yes. And my blisters literally healed that, that mm -hmm. day. But we did a lot of preparing. Um, Junior had, and, and Sylvia had carefully driven, Junior had a, a red covered, a red colored Dodge van had carefully marked out the way in her odometer, knew where we would need to stop, did some thinking about that. And when, when our feet would be wet, because one of the things that was hard about the whole process of going down is that when you're marching continuously for that long, mm -hmm. you sweat. Right. And then the socks begin to stick to your feet, and that's when you begin to get blisters and you begin to have all kinds of problems. So she also figured out how often we would need to stop mm -hmm. to change our socks. That was the level of detail 
on the planning that Junior did. It was just amazing. She, she read was. books about long distance walking, you know, and, and so 